joystick drift is inevitable. At least I always thought it was. The Gully Kit King Kong 2 Pro Controller. Boy, they should have workshopped that name a bit more. I know, right? Anyway, this controller is not supposed to have drift. The reason is, is because it has Hall Effect joysticks. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty here, but when you have a traditional joystick on a normal controller, the reason that it knows which way you're pushing the joystick is because two pieces of something are coming into contact with each other. And whenever you have two objects physically touching, there's eventually going to be some wear and tear. Hall Effect joysticks don't actually come into contact with anything. They sense which way you're tilting the joystick based on electromagnets. And because there's nothing coming into contact with each other, it shouldn't ever wear down. Theoretically, these joysticks should never have drift. First of all, the joysticks feel great. They've got a steel post and a steel ring around the outside. So as you are moving the joystick around, it feels incredibly smooth. They also ship with different joysticks that you can replace depending on how long of a joystick that you want. I've never used longer joysticks before and I tried the longest one, which seemed like way too much. The shortest one is the one that comes pre-installed and then there's a mid-range one and that one feels like it's right for me. By pressing the gear button and the screenshot button at the same time, you can enter what's known as no dead zone mode. I didn't expect to be as impressed by this as I was. The controller feels incredibly responsive. I can't believe how much better it is having no dead zones on a controller. On a traditional controller, you have to have those dead zones because over time, the wearing down of the parts inside the controller means that the smaller your dead zone, the more likely drift is to happen. By getting rid of that inevitability of controllers wearing down, the dead zones aren't necessary and the controller feels way more responsive, especially when you combine zero dead zone mode with the taller joystick. I gotta be honest, I feel like this is gonna make it hard for me to go back to controllers that have those big dead zones. I really hope that this controller pushes the big manufacturers in the video game space into switching over to Hall Effect joysticks. Gully Kit went above and beyond with this controller. They included replacement buttons, replacement switches, replacement joysticks, and it's just fantastic that they included all of that stuff. Mine came configured for the Nintendo Switch with the A button on the right, but my plan was to use this with my Steam Deck, meaning I wanted to have the A button on the bottom. So I took the whole thing apart and I replaced the buttons. Now I am not handy, but I did have this kit made for repairing Joy-Cons. There's a link in the description. So I gave it a shot. First, I put it back together and I realized that the X button was sticking, so I had to take it all back apart. Got everything back out, I adjusted the X button, and then I realized after putting it back together that my bumpers were not being very responsive. So I took it all apart again, fixed that, I put it all back together, and only to realize that I put the X button in upside down. Now this certainly isn't the fault of the controller, but it was frustrating. I'm honestly surprised you survived. Yeah, it was kind of an ordeal. I mean, it scared me away from putting the Hall Effect sensors in my Steam Deck as I would have to solder the... Don't do it, you'll burn the house down. Don't worry, I'm gonna pass. I don't know anything about soldering. Let's talk about the gyro real quick. One of the reasons that I wanted this controller is because it has built-in gyro. I love gyro for aiming. Now you can press a button on top of the controller in order to toggle it between being a switch controller, an X input controller, whatever it is that Android uses, and a direct input controller. If you want the controller to just work with the Steam Deck and Gyro, just tell it to be a switch controller. All the other options don't really feel right because essentially the controller is pretending to be an Xbox controller and Xbox controllers don't have Gyro. So then it pretends to be an Xbox controller and then it has gyro, so then it's pretending to translate gyro to joystick when you really want to have gyro input as a mouse. So for me, the best use was to tell it to be a switch controller. Did somebody say mouse? Not that kind of mouse. Oh. <sighs> 
Now you have the ability to toggle the gyro on and off by selecting either your left bumper or your left trigger as a button. You do that by hitting the gear button and hitting one of those two buttons. You can adjust the sensitivity by hitting those, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about is that that works perfectly if your game is aiming down sights with one of those buttons or if one of those buttons isn't actually being used for anything. But most games are using those buttons for something, so I feel like I couldn't really use it that way. I ended up just leaving the gyro on all the time, but what would make these joysticks perfect is if they did what the Steam Deck did, where they have a capacitive touch sensitive uh, thumbstick, so it knows when you have your thumb on that stick and then activates the gyro. And then if you don't have your thumb on that stick, deactivate the gyro. Yes, I could get into Steam input and do some really crazy stuff in order to set that up on stick deflection, but I don't know that I want to set that up for each and every game. Hey Bill, you're always talking about controllers. What would be your perfect controller? You know, that's a good question. I think it would be whatever device has all of the features of the Steam Deck and Hall Effect joysticks. If you combine those two things, you would absolutely have in my opinion, the perfect controller. Now I do have to mention that I did have to update the firmware when the controller got here. Like I, it got here, I opened it up, I took it out. I was super excited to use it and I couldn't get it to pair with my Nintendo Switch, with my Steam Deck, with my Mac, with my iPad, with my iPhone, nothing would communicate with this thing. And I reached out to Gully Kit on Twitter and I said, hey, I'm running into this issue. What am I supposed to do? They asked me to send a video. How are you using this? What do you like? Assuming that I was just doing something wrong, which, hey, I worked tech support before. That is the first thing that you do. You assume that the customer is doing something wrong. Well, I wasn't doing anything wrong. It turns out that I needed to update the firmware in order to use the controller. And as this is a consumer device, I really feel like shipping the device without the most recent firmware on it is definitely a problem. It wouldn't be a problem if the controller was usable out of the box, but I did have to update the firmware. That being said, updating the firmware was actually really easy. All I had to do is plug it into my computer, hit a certain keyboard combination, or not keyboard, a uh, button combination on the controller, and then it turned into essentially a hard drive and then I downloaded the correct bin files from Gully Kit, dropped them on the controller's hard drive. It automatically disconnected, shut off, and when I turned it back on, everything worked. Overall, I think that this is a fantastic controller. The texture makes it feel really good in the hand. The joysticks are incredibly smooth and it's really customizable. I think the face buttons feel awesome. I don't like where the plus and minus buttons are, I think that they're just a little too far away and I end up hitting the uh, like the menu buttons instead when I want to hit those buttons, but that's, you know, on me. And the fact that I was able to open it up and put the buttons where I want them means that, hey, if I can do it, any idiot can do it. At least one idiot already has. Thanks, pal. There are also some special features that make the controller cool, but I don't know that I would ever use them, like the ability for you to build macros and then just press a button and have the controller take over for you. I don't really see the appeal to that, but I'm sure that there's people out there that can think of a reason why you would want that. Let me know in the comments section down below that like button. You can also adjust the joystick and gyro and uh, trigger sensitivity just by doing some simple button combinations on the actual controller. You can calibrate the gyro without any software. You just set it on a desk, hit a button combination and it will calibrate for you. Although they say you probably don't have to do that. Overall, I think that this is a really good one size fits all controller. It's not everything that I would like it to be. Again, I would love to have the capacitive thumbstick caps and there's no buttons on the back, but overall, this controller is awesome. So what do you guys think? Have you tried out the Gully Kit King Kong 2 Pro Controller? I have to think about the name there. Uh, have you guys tried that out? Let me know what you guys think of it in the comment section down below and let me know what controllers you have been using. Don't just say the Steam Deck controller. I'm talking about controllers that you have in your hand when you're playing docked or something like that. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. There's another one for you to watch right here. I will see you on the next one. Stay rad, everybody. Bye-bye.